teacher who harassed non-religious students loses court appeal. On December 16th, American atheists announced their success in a lawsuit on behalf of Mary Lee Oliver, a non-religious high school student in Houston, Texas. The lawsuit was filed against Marie's teacher, Benji Arnold, who retaliated against her for sitting out from reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals refused to grant Benji qualified immunity in June. He then petitioned for a new hearing. On December 15th, by a vote of 10 to 7, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals um, rejected his request. Jeffrey T. Blackwell, American Atheist Lit Litigation Council, said, quote, this is an important victory for non-religious Americans and all Americans. He added, the classroom is not a pulpit. It is a place of education, not indoctrination. No student should be punished for exercising her First Amendment rights. Mary's civil rights lawyer, Randall, Randall uh, Kal Kalinen, Kalinen, said, quote, a student's right to peaceful freedom of expression does not end at the schoolhouse steps. Wow, what a major victory. This is great. Yeah, so what happened was the student objected to reciting, well, the student not only objected to reciting under God, but did not feel that liberty and justice to all, you know, as within the Pledge of Allegiance, applied to all citizens, specifically citizens of color. And this was fascinating. So I was actually reading through um, the decision from the court about this and it was really interesting because the um judge who wrote the um statement um that summarized the belief of the majority you know who ruled in, in this way um he from reading his writings you can tell he's an extremely anti-woke person but he was completely against this teacher trying to force his more conservative opinions onto these students even though by the way that he writes and what he is citing you can tell he is very much against um wokeism like it's 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 reflected constantly in his writings on this judgment like what um, um wait who's uh huh can you be uh, and so so wait who's the, who's the anti woke person we're referring to the judge who wrote okay. the the majority the, okay. opinion on this case okay okay See, okay. it's a sad fact of modern life in America that the culture wars are no longer limited to skirmishes between elected officials on Capitol Hill or in our state capitals. They are increasingly fought by students and parents in the classrooms and before school boards across America. This is one such example. Viewing the evidence in light of the most recent, uh, most favorable to the plaintiff, as we must at this stage, a public school teacher punished a student for refusing to embrace certain views on America, religion, and race. There are countless examples nationwide. Some teachers require to view students and others differently because of their race, notwithstanding our nation's commitment to racial equality and colorblindness. See Christopher F. Rufo. Woke Elementary, a Cooper, uh, uh, can't talk. Cooper Element, Cupertino Elementary School forces third graders to deconstruct their racial identities, then rank themselves according to their power and privilege. And critical race theory co collides with the law. Can a school require students to confess their privilege in class? So those are two things he's citing. Others forbid students from using biological pronouns and other terms that invalidate a person's gender identity, notwithstanding the widely held view that biological pronouns invalidate no one but are dictated by science, faith, grammar, or tradition. Um, some, some teachers force students to express views deeply offensive to their faith. And still others compel students to endorse certain political positions. As is this case, these stories are allegations. It should go without saying that forcing a public school student to embrace political, certain particular political views serves no legitimate pedagog, pedag I always have such a hard time with this, pedagogical, <laughs> pedagogy, no, ped, yeah, whatever, we know what I'm talking about, <laughs> ped, pedagogical, I think I got it, god damn it. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. It's, it's a such twister. a hard one. It's um, a tongue twister. No, I want to re I want to review what some of this teacher said to this student because it was so wild. Um, wait, let me find some of this. Um, he 
was basically um trying he was like he was like very anti-communist okay so this is um arnold is the name of the teacher and oliver is the name of the student yet arnold informed oliver in front of the entire class that he would give her a grade of zero on the assignment for her refusal to participate in this what's more arnold went on and delivered extended remarks that confirmed his agenda were not pedagogical but personal as he told the class you can all have different beliefs and resentment and animosity that you want but quote if you can tell me two countries you'd rather go to i will pay your way there if they're communists or socialists most of europe is socialist and it's crumbling or it's communists but if you ever want to come back you have to pay me twice of what it cost me to send you there what <laughs> jesus christ so um you know, and then also, Wait, quote, mo says, you, he says most of Europe is communist. He's saying that most of Europe is socialist and crumbling. And that if you, if what you, want, you, if you think a communist about? country is better, he will pay your way there. But if you want to come back, you have to pay him back twofold. Which countries in Europe is he thinking that he's? Socialist? I don't know. This is some teacher in Texas. I mean, first of all, most countries, like many countries in Europe, are doing better than the United mm -hmm. States. And they're capitalists. They just have m better social safety nets. Do these people think social safety nets nets means communism? Like these people really so. actually. These people think social safety nets means communism. Amazing. Or socialism at the very least. And, and they're teachers. And yes. they're teaching. Amazing. <laughs> wait, Ghost Bunny's saying, wait, can this dude get me to Denmark? <laughs> 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 Blank name is yes, send me to Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at um, okay. And uh, so this is another quote from this teacher. You know, there's a lot of things I complain about. So when it comes time in November, I go vote. I protest in writing and legal. Those are the ways we do it in America. Where a, com where a country will crumble is when people coming to a country do not assimilate to that country. That doesn't mean you forget Day of the Dead, whatever cultures, you maintain your language. That doesn't mean that. But you're not going to drive on the left side of the road. You're not going to impose Sharia law because it's not this country. But what is happening, and I can say a lot more than you because I've lived longer, it's almost as if America is assimilating to those countries. This is the teacher saying all of this. Yes. Amazing. Well, I'm glad the judge showed him that you, your views are not American values. Like, as you keep lecturing people about American way of life and American values, apparently you don't represent them <laughs> because the American legal system has shown you that you're you're wrong, mister. You're actually, it's, it's actually the most American thing is for people to be able to complain and be able to tell you to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, I, you know, I love this comment like, from Secular Rarity. Whoa, whoa, did this giant guy equate Sharia law and driving on the left side of the road? <laughs> I mean, technically, I mean, what I mean, which one is worse? I think, like, driving, <laughs> I, I think driving on the left side of the road is worse. Um, <laughs> Shari, what what does Sharia law got to do with any of this, by the way? Because he's saying, like, people come to this country, or he's projecting that people come to this country and expect to implement Sharia law here. That's what I got from that statement. What we are actually more worried about is people who are already living in this country and expecting to implement Christian values and law. That is the threat to United States at the moment. We'll, yeah. we'll start worrying about Sharia law in the United States when it becomes as big of a threat as it is in like Iran or Saudi Arabia. Right now, yeah. what's, what's a threat to the American way of life is Christianity okay? That's the that that thing has its tentacles right up, you know, up the booty. This ass, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like, it's like I really high up there. Um, you yeah, know, it's true. Yeah, um, no, no what's really interesting is that at the heart of this lawsuit was this teacher had this assignment to the students where they were supposed to basically write um, the lyrics to 
um, the 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 they were supposed to write out the Pledge of Allegiance, and then they were all supposed to they were supposed to write out the lyrics to the song "Born in the USA" by Bruce Springsteen, and the whole point was supposed to teach children about um, his about how we repeat things every day, we recite things all the time, but we don't actually retain or imbue their meaning. Um, and it's really interesting. I mean, I'm not going to go into it much further here, but the actual judgment by um, the, the, the circuit judges denying him this level of appeals was basically like he even admits that it's more about, it's not about the memorization. It's not, it's... It, it, in the way that he went about trying to defend himself, it's very clear that this was a personal agenda to him because he wanted the children to memorize or write down the lyrics to Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen because he's saying it's actually one of the most like anti-American songs that there is. It's a song that's very critical of the US, but people just sing it because they like the chorus, which I'm not going to sing because of YouTube. Um, but so the fact that this student didn't want to participate in this project because she had issues with what is said you know it fits with the assignment actually but he was going to like make her do it even though he she was going along with like being critical of just this like recitation without actually um mm. being thinking through the meaning and what's being said and imbued yeah teachers shouldn't be able to get get to force students to do certain things like like, well, that's not true, think... Armin. You have to be able to force students to do some things. You have to force them to sit still. You have to force them to eat lunch. What age? You... Well, these were high school students. Yeah, no, you shouldn't be able to get them to force them to do anything. You're what the are you employee... talking about? If you can't no, make mean... students do certain things, they are going to disrupt the learning environment of everyone else around them. You have to make kids do certain things. It's also about maintaining standards. Okay, I'm... I will, we'll discuss this in another time um but like getting them to sing something like this should be like people should be able to say like i don't want to sing that um so um i just want to address this the unknown apostate is saying yes but christian law is isn't as dangerous as sharia law uh technically yes effectively no effectively given that christian values i would say is affecting the world superpower uh policies um and laws and you know especially foreign policy and climate change and everything like that then in effect even if it's a religion that is less political because it's effect is affecting the most powerful country on the planet the effect on the planet will be a lot more I, I don't know if I'm making it clear what I'm trying to say or not, okay? So Christianity is, in effect, even though it's, like, technically not as dangerous as Islam, but in effect is causing the most harm in the world because of its influence being felt so much more globally and, and in such more extreme levels than any other religion possibly could. So, for example... We would it would be much a much bigger disaster if the world superpower was like an Islamic country. That would be really horrible. But right now, as it is, the world superpower is Christian. So Christianity is responsible for the greatest harm on the planet as we speak. Um, that's just like I mean, just the mere impact. Just like just two examples will just cover all of the harm that you could think of, right? Just the impact that Christians have over electing people that don't take climate change seriously in the United States, the impacts of that is going to be more, the damage from that is going to be more from than all the terrorist attacks combined will not cause more harm uh, than neglecting climate change, right? So there's that. And also electing politicians who um, take foreign policy decisions based on Jerusalem being where Jesus is supposed to resurrect and, you know, this, the destruction of Alaska Max, a mosque and reconstructing the temple being the goal of these Christian and you know, of these Christians and them having such a high voting power that affecting 
international politics to such extreme ways, okay, is also damaging to the whole planet beyond um, even the most radical of Islamic groups. Again, it's not... I know inherently Islam is a more destructive religion, but it doesn't have that ac that level of access to power as Christianity has. So in effect, Christianity is causing more harm. All right. So I'm going to see if you find any objections to what I just said while I go get the next news. Um, mm -hmm. No, just uh, people agreeing with you. People? Really? No. Well, liberal Bengali Hindu is saying Christianity and medieval Europe is worse than the Islamic world at that time. Wait, let me see. Christianity and medieval Europe is worse than the Islamic world at that time. Yes, yeah, but we're talking we're talking about right now. We're talking about right now. Even even right now, like if you look at case by case basis, Islamic harm looks worse than Christian harm. But if you look at aggregate harm, then Christianity, because of its influence on, on, on American politics, the aggregate harm of Christianity right now is worse in the world uh, than Islam or than any other religion. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.